Hello and welcome back to Game of Thrones Weekly. I'm your host, Ryan Mallody, and today, in the spirit of the season, it's that time of year again, we're talking Game of Thrones holidays and traditions, from the festivals in High Garden to the great games in Slaver's Bay, from name days to funerals, let's dive right in, as is tradition. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Ah, uh, yes. I feel like, you know, the, the Game of Thrones theme song is, it honestly is like a Christmas song to my ears. Like it has bells, Almost. it has the whole, the whole symphony orchestra, or, or Hanukkah music. I don't know I, traditionally oh, yeah. what Hanukkah music sounds like, but Jeremy, you might have to tell us about that a little later. Pretty much just like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> epic, epic. This is... uh, welcome back, everybody. It's, it's good to be back here in the After Buzz TV studios to talk Game of Thrones weekly. Um, today we're talking... What, it, what is it like to celebrate holidays and traditions and, and, and festivals and stuff in the Game of Thrones world? And joining me uh, for a second or third time are some of my favorite co-hosts and guest hosts. Okay. We have Jeremy Dan, a professor of innovation and entrepreneurship at USC. Dude. Right on. He's also Jewish, so we get that that perspective <laughs> from that side of the table. <laughs> is, that, you, is that on the resume or is that yeah. just something I threw in? It's right at the top of the LinkedIn, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, Lauren Shear, who we... Uh, Belovedly call John Summer. Mm -hmm. We can't call him John Snow because look at them Goldilocks. Yeah, no, that's true. I'm too blonde. Welcome back. He has <laughs> more of the back. summer complexion too. He does, and he's not more. a winter. I'm not fair skin. Yeah. No, you're not a Wouldn't maiden. Make it in the you're north. not a you're not a ma a babe. Not 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 yet. No, you're <laughs> Gaston in, in my book. Yeah. Always <laughs> Gaston. Yeah. And then we have a good pal Ross, like a boss, sitting next to me to my left. That's Ross, me. what what are you doing here? I don't know. Okay. I still don't know. <laughs> Neither do we. Yeah, you just you just come. I in. just appear. I don't know how he finds the place. It's a celebration. Here. It's a party. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, in the season. Yeah. So they turned the lights on. I was in the room. I was like, oh. <laughs> wow, well, I'm back again. All we're, right. We're glad that you have nowhere else to go. Yeah. Welcome back, Ross. Me too. Thanks. All right, guys. So so holidays. Holidays in our world are. Uh, it comes from what derived from the two words holy day, which is usually a, a celebration of a religious holiday, but uh, in our world we get time off work for our holidays we 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 have winter holidays breaks from school breaks from you know life and in game of thrones the world is just operates a little bit differently fundamentally why do you think that is but uh, it's a brutish world it's nasty it's violent uh people are still tied to the land and for a, a, a an economy and a whole civilization so tied to the land i kind of I personally have wondered about this. I kind of don't get it because, you right. know, we the winter comes irregularly. Mm -hmm. It's not like seasons, like in, uh, uh, you know, our our um, calendar when we know the sun is at its highest. And that's right. midsummer. And it's an excuse for Scandinavians to drink all day. Right. Uh, we have, you have yeah. the, you, well, going back to, I mean, we see evidence that celebrations and rituals were... Um, exclusively tied to the summer and winter solstices and the equinoxes which are indicative of you know the seasons changing and crops to be you know and it's time to, it's time to celebrate oh look it's the, the longest day of the year let's celebrate it from the Aztecs to whoever built Stonehenge I mean they were all really in tune kind of with Celts. the, yeah. the astrolog astronomical signs and symbols that were headed our way and that's kind of a, a foundation of, of our holidays but but in Game of Thrones you're right the seasons are all out of whack there's yeah. no like every year they're... you know we have that feeling of oh it's Christmas time it's well yeah, we're in LA they... so we don't really get that feeling Probably anyway celebrate the longest winter ever it's like <laughs> like never ending winter it feels like living in LA it feels like the long summer to be honest it's just like yeah, 82 summer degrees. Is yeah. Summer, is summer is here. Is coming. <laughs> summer is, is coming here to again. Stay. <laughs> yeah, cool. but there's no like yearly expectation of like, oh, it's you know, it feels it's like it anything. feels like it's you no, know, it's just winter or summer in Game of Thrones. Although, never really asked that that question of is there is there a kind of a brief? They always say winter is coming, but wouldn't you call that like? I didn't see a spring. What is that called when it's uh, not? Is it's that autumn? Fall. Is that yeah. fall, is right? Just, uh, <laughs> I just saw like there's two seasons pretty much. It's like it's winter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. W winter is coming. Well, then it's, it's fall. Mm -hmm. It's fall. Some, it, summer's almost here. Should we call it spring? No, no. no. Uh, do they have it's the, still winter. Do they have a day down for like winter. They're like, oh, it's like next month. No, or they is it just like they wake up. Probably the the maesters at the at the send out the white ravens. They send the ravens to say hey it's winter time so mm -hmm. so in the game of thrones they don't have a calendar per se it's just they I have mean, a they have a uh they, they keep track of years like we do 
but whatever happened that, that season, it, it just happened. It's it's part of that. And year. we and we know they keep track of years like we do because every single year they have what's called a name day. So we'll just jump right into that. Uh, name days are are, are uh, it's like apparently it's your birthday. Yeah. It's your birthday because in the Game of Thrones world you're named on the day of your birth. You, they you, they don't give you a name until you're born. Um, there's actually something that's called a name day in in lots of parts of Europe where if you have the same name as a saint, like Saint Peter, hmm. then you celebrate your name day if your name is Peter on Peter's celebration of, of Saint Peter, whenever that I think it's like what is it? Like June twenty ninth. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the <laughs> feast of Saint Peter. Peter. Right? Peter. Peter. If you're Peter, <laughs> yeah, Peter. Yeah. but the wildlings they don't name their their children until about two years after birth because of the mortality rate's so high, so they don't even uh, give their kids a name. <laughs> well, plus some of them have to turn them over to, of course, the uh, the dead. Right. And uh, you won't get too attached if you have to hand it over. They, they get re they get renamed anyway when the nice right. blue fingernail yeah, like, comes down. <laughs> right when the when the night when the night king comes and, and turns yeah. that baby into a blue walker. <laughs> All right, there goes Doug. Billy. White walker. Yeah. <laughs> won't name the next one. Huh? Do, do white walkers have names? I mean, the night king has one, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it's more of a description, but I, maybe that's how they name them. You know, like. Blue yeah, the, <laughs> so they're like the Native American yeah. culture of, the, of yeah. the Game of Thrones world. <laughs> Walking wind. wind. Walk. One with ice. <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Runs, runs on mics. <laughs> well, name, name days are fun, and Mr. it seems like, though, it seems like <laughs> the, only, the only people who really celebrate name days are, are nobility, because I haven't seen, to be honest, we, have, we don't really get that much of a glimpse into the peasant world and lifestyle. The only time we really do is like right before their village is mm. pillaged and burned down. And everyone's raped. We yeah, just kind of get like a little window into their world. They don't have a lot like, to celebrate. Oh, hello. Yeah. It's usually not very happy either, nah. so we kind of think they're like sad all the time. Yeah. Because they're getting pillaged. There was a nice party in Mole Town that lasted for like 30 seconds until the wildlings <laughs> yeah. came by. That yeah. looked, they were being festive yeah, there. They were having a good time. I think that was like their secret Santa party. I think they were, it was like the yeah, office party. Yeah, probably exchanging yeah. gifts. Yeah. That's all what it's like. hanging out together in the village. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 the... Uh, the the hound was famously quoted as what a man sows on his name day he reaps throughout the year basically there is a lot of superstition in this world of game of thrones and name day doesn't escape it so you basically but i've never heard that usually when it's your birthday especially if you're uh you know a sweet 16er it's like your birth week and everything goes yeah. anything goes you can just get away with whatever you want yeah, it's a birth week birth month that for people do <laughs> is it birth month yeah is it birth month when's your birthday september i'll be busy yeah, I'll the be, whole month. Okay. Yeah, September. Oh, look at that. I'm, yeah. Yep, sorry. September? <laughs> yep. Oh, geez. Book, the birth month. <laughs> yeah. Name month. Right. Um, uh, yeah, so name day is a, is, a, is, a fest, is a celebration that we for sure know that everybody who has a name and celebrates it, you know, it, it, it transcends uh, religion and region. Um, and the other celebration that we know for sure happens uh, are weddings. Oh yeah. I mean, weddings are like the the only celebration that we know for sure. Everyone loves. They don't yeah, they love so it. Well. What what's the saying? Nothing good ever happens after midnight. I mean, mm -hmm. in Game of Thrones, nothing good ever happens at a wedding. All, all, so far, <laughs> we have some name brand weddings: red wedding, mm -hmm. purple wedding. I mean, those are the only white, weddings we. The see. white wedding is when um, Sansa got married mm -hmm. to to, to Ramsay Bolton. Not a good. Uh, yeah. And 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 Not there you go. Way. There's a, there's a good example. We we classify as viewers. We classify them as colors. Um, but uh, those those weddings all had similarities and and stark ha, stark differences. Um, let's look upon each other and say the words: stark Father, difference. Smith, Warrior, <laughs> Mother, <laughs> May, May Crone, Stranger. Stranger. They they have these. Are, these are we binding our hands together as we do that? You bind the hands, oh. and, then, and then you put the cloak. You put that, the cloak on me. The lights put me under your protection. By the way, that is the only other wedding we've seen, which was the wedding of Stark to Targaryen. That seemed to be a, just about the happiest, right? Yeah. It was a, more of a destination wedding. It was like getting it down on the beach in, in uh, you know, Antigua or something. Like they, they wanted to be away from all those people. Wh which one were we yeah. talking about? So Targaryen to, to Stark, Lyanna. Yeah, Lyanna and Rhaegar. Yeah. 
in the flashback. Oh, oh the, the flashback. flashback. Yeah. 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 No, but that, that seemed to be the only semi-happy wedding. Yeah. Everything else, else ends I mean, in Rhaegar disaster. Got killed because of it. But. Yeah. But that was weeks <laughs> later. Yeah, that weeks was, later. The that wedding itself was good. Was good. Yeah. You know what? Here's the thing about Game of Thrones. If you don't mm. get killed at your mm. own wedding, it's a good wedding. I mean, yeah, that's how like, you judge it. You can get killed 12.01 a.m. Uh, unless yeah. it's a Dothraki wedding, in which case... If there's any less than three deaths, yeah, it's considered it's a dull affair. A failure. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <laughs> Wedding's off. <laughs> and uh, there you go on, on the on the west coast and on or on the Westeros and Essos. Yeah. As long as there's a death, I mean, it's, it's like uh, most to people are happy wedding, with it. You know. Let's be honest, in a, a Game of Thrones wedding. But you have the you have the the main religions. Um, uh, in Westeros, are you have the old gods? People worship the old gods of the forest. And you have the Faith of the Seven. And we've seen weddings under both of those. The Old Gods of the Forest when um, Rob Stark eloped with... Uh, mm. The Doc. Talisa mm. or something, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So they eloped, but they... Uh, old Gods and, and, and Weddings of the North... Um, the North have kind of like a laissez-faire attitude about everything. And so when it comes to their celebrations, they're just kind of like, eh, just have the father of the bride be the, you know, be the officiant and just, mm -hmm. s we'll say the words, but just tell her, just say, do you take this woman? I do. Do you take him? I do. All right, let's get drunk. Uh, boom. Yeah. Celebration. Whereas the further south you go, the fancier it gets, the more pomp and circumstances mm -hmm. involved. All right, who's dying? You have these, yeah. <laughs> these big feasts, you know, after the wedding. And usually they're having a temple or you know, the sept. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then there's the bedding ceremony, which is another ceremony which, you know, we can all relate to uh, weddings. I've been to like four last year. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and they're all, you know, they all... I've been to Four yeah. <laughs> total. <laughs> what a crazy year! <laughs> oh, <man. Yeah. laughs> but uh, the betting ceremony. Could you imagine, like that being a thing still? But did everyone watch this ceremony happening. They don't. They they take the the bride and groom to their chambers. Sometimes strip them down along the way. However drunk they have to be at the, the time. The people There's no there's no really right or wrong way for it to be done. But the, only, the the main reason why it's done, it's usually emphasized emphasized when nobles are married is because they want proof that the the, the wedding is consummated. The marriage has been, you know, uh <laughs> sealed <laughs> yeah, seal of man, approval. That's yeah. And it was more more important for that to happen because it was it ensured bloodlines. Like, well, there's stuff there that's really based on parts of our history and cultures around the world of, you know, verifying virginity, making sure mm -hmm. the consummation happened um there's a lot of, of of care and attention that goes to that first uh um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it yeah. is not taken taken for granted in a lot of cultures yeah, yeah. and in dothraki cultures they i mean they just do it under the stars for all the khalasar to see you know so uh, they uh they want people it's to also see, important that, yeah they want it you know <laughs> there has to be death or sex and they want to see both of them Sex and around. death yeah. are, are is always the main theme in Game of Thrones. We have, yeah. you know, and funerals will, will, are coming up, coming up next year with the death ceremonies. But the most, the mm -hmm. most time we see people celebrating, it's either celebrating, um, you're about to have some sex, well, let's have a feast, or hey, they just they just died, let's have a feast. Yeah, it's like someone, <laughs> someone's already died, so they got that life. out of the way. Like most Celebrate of them, they're like new life and death. Like, their death. Hey, someone's already dead. We're pretty much we're safe. Yeah, they oh, got the death out of the way. Can't wait Sunday. to see what the food's like. <laughs> I mean, have you ever been to a wet, like a like kind of what kind of weddings do you normally you normally see in the modern the modern day you see a traditional kind of church style kind of wedding. It's getting less and less religious nowadays, and it's more just you know. But the, 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 but the ceremony will walk down the aisle. Mm. The, the the groom's already up there, so the bride you know walks up when everyone's you know watching her. Because all that the dress is so fantastic. Right. You gotta you know check the dress. The dress is like a huge part of it. Yeah, Whereas Game it. of Thrones is the cloak. The dress doesn't matter so much. You never really hmm. heard them talking about the dress. Yeah, they, they didn't say yes. Except for Loras Tyrell, he like <laughs> totally fantasized about what he was gonna wear. <laughs> yeah. Remember, he's just like, oh, you know, the brooches mm -hmm. are great. <laughs> but I remember uh, when I I went to my cousin's wedding. My family's my on my my father's side. Uh, they're from Egypt and they're Coptic Orthodox. And they, uh, it's a lot of singing, a lot of uh, like Aramaic and Arabic, and they sing it all, and there's incense. But at one point during the wedding, the, the, um, 
they they cloak each other just like in Game of Thrones. So in a Coptic Orthodox wedding, you actually have the bride and groom cloaked in these like, and then they wear a crown. Like they look like king and queen for the day, you know. And they sit in a throne, and they tell you, you know. And then it's kind of like it's almost kind of misogynistic of a wedding because like because like they make the the little woman like swear that you know that they're gonna serve the man. Who, like, who, who buys yeah. the Who buys the crown? Which which family? Does it's that part work? of the church. They bring it out. They have they it provide all. The they have it in the church. Okay. They have it ready to go. And then like when the wedding's over, they take it back. Oh, I think we have some we have some cloaking up there. Yeah, they're. Uh, we have Anthony showing showing some uh, some cloaking mm-hmm. images throughout the throughout the season. We have uh, you know Tyrion cloaking Sansa. We have um, what is that's that? Tully. Ed- Ed- Edmure. Edmure. Ed- I always want to say Edard, but it's Edmure. Edmure Tully, cloaking. Um, what do we ever get her name? Frey. Just the <laughs> yeah, pretty Frey. Is it Rosalind? No, I forget. Something like oh man. Goodness gracious! You know when you haven't binged the whole series. She was Ms. Frey to you. Miss yeah. Ms. Frey. Sorry, you're right. We have we have a lot of cloaking, and it, it, when you're when you're at your wedding, you are, you're king for the day. You can get away with whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. Do whatever you want. I feel like that that's that's hand in hand with our our traditions. When you're when you're the bride and groom, you can do whatever you want that yeah. day. Like it's your day, you know. Yeah. You can do whatever. I feel like the modern theme for any holiday or tradition or celebration in this world is a feast that's like that's what makes it a, a celebration because Means this world or the game this of Thro- world of game of thrones the game of thrones world because we can have holidays without feasts really uh, i don't know <laughs> I, 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 I don't I don't know if there's that crazy on Easter. I mean, Easter there is Easter Sunday. You have yeah, brunch. You gotta have. You gotta have brunch. brunch. Yeah, really? yeah, of course. Just, yeah, Fourth of July barbecue. Okay. Thanksgiving obviously. Yeah. Christmas Christmas, Christmas ham. Yeah. Eat, eat goose. Hanukkah uh, potato potato pancakes. I yeah. Know, what, what? Hanukkah <laughs> Hanukkah is, is one. Yeah. There's not a feast as much yeah, related to as that as opposed to like Passover. Mm-hmm. Which is uh-huh. literally a feast. The meal is a religious service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hanukkah doesn't stack up well. You get some potato pancakes and Hanukkah. <laughs> so gel- I, was, I wasn't just ha- Hanukkah gelt, <laughs> which you know is the the chocolate uh, money candy. You know, so like oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little Finger, maybe he had some of that. He, he'd love that. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> spin, spin the dreidel, betting yeah. a betting game. You know, lose a dagger if, if you. Uh, Spin it the wrong Very way, and there you go. There's another example of of, of <laughs> that's how it happened. <laughs> of festival celebrations, there is 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 a tournament. There's a lot of tournaments mm-hmm. in Game of Thrones. So whether it's a name day or a wedding or just a a coronation or you know it's usually related to nobility. It's usually whoever can afford to throw a party. Yeah, and a tournament is really what gets the everything going in the whole Game of Thrones series with the tournament at Heron Hall, which led to the the crowning of the beauty of the tournament, which happened to be Lyanna Stark and not the real wife of Rhaegar. So, again, nothing good happens nothing at these good. parties. Yeah. I know. I, they're crazy. barely holidays or, or, or traditions. I, I feel like... Um, Everyone, they're um, they're powder they celebrate kids. getting killed. It's pretty <laughs> celebrate much just doing. making it through. Yeah, making yeah. it through. Hey, it's it's a, a pre party to getting killed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's right. basically what let's all just, of these are. Yeah, we might as well alive. We might yeah, as well like, party. Right? I feel something coming soon, so let's just all quick. gather in this one spot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lower our defenses, drink quite a bit, and just yeah. Ah, uh, the drink, the they, wine. They make themselves targets. Where the beer flows like wine. Mm-hmm. That's all they really have is ale. Blackberry wine, mead, Dornish wine, Maybe Arbor. Yeah. Do they have any hard liquor in, in Game of Thrones? I don't know. We should have researched this. Yeah. That would be that would be a good episode for this show. Is like a drinking, oh, the liquor. and we can like sample it right on. The uh, drinking, the drinking Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> should have. I should have came prepared. Is that, that the one. January or fe- February show? We gotta get yeah, ready for really. that. <laughs> uh, that's whenever St. Patrick's Day is. Oh. oh okay. March, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. So yeah, it's, stay tuned. We're gonna have a drinking episode yeah. in a few months. Um, let's talk about Essos for a little bit. We have religions over the Essos that originated with the Lord of Light. You know, people you know worship the Lord of Light, the many-faced God of Death, and of course the Great Stallion from the Dothraki. We have a tradition uh, that I couldn't really find much about, but it's where uh, it's the child naming. Is when when Daenerys names her her child, her unborn child, Rhaegar, right? I think it was Rhaegar. 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 Mm-hmm. Rhaegar. Yeah, Rhaegar. 
um, she named him far before she was even showing, you know, and that was that was not indicative to the rest of the rest of the Game of Thrones world. They usually name their children when they're born, but in this ceremony, she has to eat a horse heart. Yeah, keep it down, and then she can name her kid. She didn't end up having the kid either, so she just ended up eating a horse heart, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah she kind of traded life for death. Again, for parties suck. Yeah, <laughs> again, <laughs> nothing ever goes. <laughs> Worst feast ever. Yum. <laughs> so uh, that was one example of that. You, you see just a few traditional celebration elements in the Dothraki. I mean, they're really kind of a go by the seat of their, you know, seat of their horse kind of culture. And they just do everything out in the open with each other. There's no real exchange of, of value. They just kind of love to rape, pillage, and conquer. But there's well, not well, too much celebration. Again, there's set. another one. We, we, you know, we talked about we know how holidays came about in our culture, and it's not just to get off of work. The ancient holidays were the, the cycles of the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. Think about the Dothraki, not tied to the land, um, not, not seasonal, not harvesting, mm -hmm. um, in a land of sort of endless summer i mean that's a warmer climate i think that whole continent is kind of as warm as the southern part of uh westeros so they would not have much seasonality it's just when you come uh, again this is from watching the show not not the books but you know what's your rhythm of life uh, getting some forage for your horses somehow and then when you get to the next city to sack it and rape pillage and steal not like harvesting and being tied to the land and having a rhythm it's true and I find that is is all. It, it, bring it back to I, I grew up in Colorado, and that's very def, well defined seasons there. So you get so you very well defined summer, fall, winter, spring. You could drop me on any day of the year, and I can tell you, it's <laughs> uh, middle spring right now. You, know, you can just tell by looking around. You feel it, and I feel like the holidays are treated um, with a little bit more significance because they reflect how people are feeling throughout the year. Whereas L.A., it's it's so. It's nice. Time it's nice all the time. It's beautiful weather all the time, but you kind of don't really feel like the year is separated mm -hmm. by holiday celebrations. It's not really there. So I can see like exactly how you're saying the endless summer could um, kind of deter any kind of annual seasonal celebration, and and you kind of save that that for something like a wedding, or if you have to like find a reason to celebrate. Right. Because if you don't have a cyclical annual event for everyone to but they've got even, to have something you gotta to have celebrate. something though that's what confuses me is mm -hmm. that like there should be an annual something and that annual something happens to be uh for the at least for the faith of the seven we have what uh marjorie uh tyrell referred to as the festival of the mother and when she described it as uh she says it's a great masquerade ball held at high garden every year on the night of the harvest moon uh, and because, I mean, Hargarden, they're, they're known for their, their harvesting, so I mean, I'm sure that's a big part of it, but it sounds like, uh, she goes, goes on to say, attendees typically spend months working on their costumes for the occasion. It sounds like a Halloween, Halloween ce yeah. celebration. they probably got nothing better to do as well. They got, they're just harvesting, they go, they work, they come home, they think about something to celebrate. Yeah. The next big thing that's coming up. The harvest moon, we just, we just, we just reaped all of our crops, about. like this is great, feeling good. Yeah, we've got this huge party coming and, up. And yeah. remember, that that is a land of more surplus in general. So mm -hmm, when would right. you have great festivals and traditions and meals and feasts? It's, you know, if you're in the north, you're scratching out some potatoes and yeah. some turnips, maybe a little right. winter wheat. Mm -hmm. If you're in the South, I mean, you have the grapes, the apples, make some si nice cider. You, you have every... All the good stuff. Yeah, all the good stuff. So probably even it was in the, the lives of the individual farmers that had a lot of surplus, as we know from uh, Jamie wanting Braun for, to take all their stocks and all their surplus yeah. from them. So they, they were probably richer, had more leisure, even just the individual farmer, that we don't get to know in the same way we, we know the North more. Sure. They get they they live a life of leisure becomes a life of boredom. You got to fill it with something. Um, at least we know that the mother festival of the mother uh, has has a celebration. The other the other uh, religious figure of the seven that we know for sure has a celebration is the maiden, in what's referred to as Maiden's Day. Uh, and I got this from Game of Thrones wiki. Uh, it's basically a, a day which the maidens of noble houses are required to go to the Sept of Light. And they, they, they light candles and place parchments and candles at the, the maiden's feet in the sept. 
and mothers, any, anyone who's had sex, mothers, whores, widows, they're all barred, along with men, from going to this celebration. It's only the virgins, the babes, the maidens, who are allowed to go to this celebration. So basically, Ross's birthday and Maiden's Day. I, <laughs> I, okay. I, I did not plan okay. that. It just came out. Um, but we, so we have Maiden's Day, we have Festival of the Mother, but that, that leaves five more gods um, that we don't have. I, I think that in the, we can go ahead and assume that in some parts of the world, at least, somebody is celebrating, you know, we have the, the father, the smith, the warrior, the crone and the stranger, somewhere in the world, someone's celebrating these gods. Do you guys have any ideas for how and which god is being celebrated? Well, the crone, crone is kind of a, a, a single uh, old lady kind of thing. You know, in China, they just kind of over the last decade, maybe decade and a half, I think, have kind of founded a holiday called Singles Day that's become bigger than Christmas. It's the biggest, like, gifting occasion in the, the world now tens hundreds of billions of dollars maybe even of of gifting so maybe with those old you know crones that have no one else in their life that could be the equivalent of singles day no kidding oh, yeah, yeah. i didn't know that that's great where's that at singles day yeah, China. <laughs> yeah. yeah like China. <laughs> we got we got to travel you should we, we we should tell all our parents that everyone to you know start gifting us i'm getting i'm getting nothing yeah man i'm single, sing, I'm single as a dollar bill <laughs> let, alone, let alone billions of them come on uh, no, that's great. I love it. it Cro Crohn's Day. The Strangers Day would make for a great uh, holiday mixer party. Like, uh, <laughs> the meeting of strangers. It's <laughs> like a networking event. Yeah, I mean, just or like <laughs> Dothraki and then like <laughs> kings and just random people. Just, at yeah, the call, it, call, call, it, call it Stranger's Eve because the next day no one's a stranger anymore. No, they're all, um, that's come, good. come as a masquerade. Stranger's Eve. Come yeah. as a masquerade, everyone like goes and like mixes or whatever. Uh -huh. Then once Stranger's Day is over, midnight or something, everyone remove the mask. Boom. And you you reveal oh, to the Oh, the Night King. Guy. I had no idea. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That explained this to the spear and you killed that guy. Over there. You know, I would just really, we mentioned the father as well. I mean, that's too easy. Father's Day. I just sure. love to see that. That would have been really uh, a great celebration at Craster's Keep. That would be really tender. <laughs> oh, gosh. Joyful. Yeah, man. Um, Sincere, uh, just yeah. no, the, the mind boggles. You think the uh, <laughs> White Walkers ever have the the gender reveal? If they ever like, <laughs> <laughs> oh boys, what is well, it? Well, they're all they're, they're all boys. boys. They're all boys. That's why their faces are all blue. It's like, <laughs> everything's blue. Everything's backed up oh, up pink. there. Yeah, if you got one pink White Walker. I mean, would a girl be? If all the White Walkers are boys, they're all blue. If there's a female White Walker. It had to, to be. Pink, it would have right? to be. Pink. It would have to be. Like, if we're following the rules of the gender reveal. Well, yeah. A pink walker. Unless you reveal like a like a new age way, like yellow, and then you're like, no one yeah. really knows what what your baby is. It's like you know, well, we haven't assigned a gender for our baby yet. Right. Okay. Maybe they they're trying to like get to other. <laughs> you get to choose what yeah. they're gonna be. Yeah, it's 2017. Yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fantastic. I love those ideas, guys. Um, what about the warrior? Every uh, day is warrior's yeah, day in Western. Yeah, yeah. It's every holiday. Another warrior That's day. That's true. Yeah, survived Fight another... my life for another day. <laughs> another day. Yeah. Uh, Smith. Smith. You know, Smith, I, I thought if any, if they were ever going to have a pinata, it would be on Smith's day. Take a hammer to it? Yeah, yeah. man. Mm. Yeah, poor, you just... Poor you, you get You get the, like, the, the local carpenter to, like, build, like, a box full of treats and then get, like, the Smith's to hand out, you know, hammers, hammers and, and swords and just whatever and just have them go to town on it. Poor Gendry probably missed the last however many Smiths Day rowing. Oh, poor I, Gendry. I don't see. Yeah, he's just like, happy yeah, Smiths Day. Bet it's Smiths Day to today, too. <laughs> <laughs> we have, so those are great ideas, and it's fun to, it's fun to imagine. But, we yeah, we have, um, I have seen online, and uh, I don't know exactly how, you know, I don't know if they're in the books or not, but every uh, one of the seven gods have their own holiday. We just haven't seen them, so it's fun to speculate. Who knows, maybe in the next couple seasons they'll squeeze in yeah. room for one more. Yeah, you know? and one final thing about that, you know, yes. I, um, I, I believe all of the... Um, of the seven has a planet associated with them, much in the way we have seven planets that we can view. Mm -hmm. I wonder if those occur when the those mm. planets or aligned. Or yeah, we don't see sky shots really in this show, but I wonder if interesting. If uh, yeah, I was I was thinking about that. 
that like you know think about Star Wars we have those epic right, scenes of the planets and the, planets and the, planets and yeah, the sunsets and all. Yeah. do you remember ever seeing a moon in Game of Thrones I never the only remember. time where I really remember them showcasing uh, an astronomical event was when the comet came oh, the red comet. oh yeah the red comet and the, I did I did I think they did mention that some people were having celebrations and you know in in, in honor of it uh, hmm. some people thought it was a bad omen so they were you know doing their traditional superstition whatever they you know Some whatever they do to jumbo. like ward off you know whatever kind of like how um uh mama stark made those i forgot they were what they were called but she was making when bran fell out of the castle mm. she was making those she was like weaving something the weaving of the yeah. of the seven gods mm -hmm. she like wove them all because she thought like the dream catchers would totally help yeah um so yeah, superstition is something when people look up in the sky in that world. I guess superstition is something that that kind of uh, is stronger than the scientific in inquisition that our that our reality in inevitably yeah. superstition up. is like. I mean, is it superstition? Like a lot of the stuff they believe actually like happens, though, right? <laughs> it's like, true. Yeah, yeah, it's is true. It really, superstition. Mm -hmm. It's just probably facts. You know. You're yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Because uh, at one point, a wildling said, "Oh, a red comet can mean only one thing, boy." dragons are back in the world and she's yeah, like well, totally that's spot exactly on exactly right <laughs> like, but like out of context you'd be like okay yeah crazy yeah she's crazy gronks and snork a... snorkel dinks you yeah. know <laughs> the snorkel dinks are very dangerous <laughs> 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 the red comet for sure means the snorkel dink. i wouldn't mess with a snorkel dink <laughs> if everyone if anyone told me there's a snorkel dink in there i wouldn't go in <laughs> um we've talked a lot about celebrations of life but as we know most Celebrations, as Jeremy pointed out, they all they all end up bad. They all take a turn for the worst, which actually leads us into our next type of celebration, the funeral, or as I have spelled out in the notes, yeah, a funeral. The funeral. <laughs> when fun, fun for us. When fun meets funerals. That's right. So we have uh, we've seen a lot of different kinds of funerals. Um, we've seen bodies, you know, adorned with uh, stones on their eyes, which Jeremy. The symbolic meaning is to remind us um, that we should not fear death because we're not truly dead. We close our eyes in one in this world and we open them in the afterlife, which is a nice thought. Uh -huh. yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's a touching it, moment of Game of Thrones. It was. It was. Um, they have. Uh, if if you if you are if you are if you have the money for it, you embalm. You're, you're dead so that they, you can spend more time mourning them before you bury them. Um, up in the north, they don't really do too much of that they just kind of like th throw you in a tomb if they have one if not they just bury you in the woods I mean get ready they're all about ready to have their own party when they yeah. they come back right yeah. just I, I wonder about mm -hmm. well, that, when, when, when the uh, the army of the dead and yeah. that's and that's another way to get rid of the dead is to, is to burn them we've seen up in uh, in uh, the, the, At the wall. night's watch the mm -hmm. wall they burn their dead now because I mean they don't have really anywhere to put them. The ground is too hard to 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 dig holes to bury you. It's a kind of a practicality thing, and then especially now that they found out, oh, they come back from the dead, so we definitely got to burn them. And they have their own rituals and rites, their own mm -hmm. chanting of you know the and watch now, being and over. And now his watch yeah. is ended, you know. So there's a. Um, I actually went recently to a um, the the a ceremony in L.A. called the burial of the of the unclaimed dead. So last, or three years ago, the, in 2014, there was like 1,500 people who died and no one claimed them. No one said, that I know that guy or girl or baby or whoever, a lot of people. And uh, after every, every three years, the, the city and county of Los Angeles takes all those dead, cremates them, and then buries them and has a little ceremony and kind of respects, you know, their memory with a celebration, uh, a ceremony of you have... Um, like a Catholic priest, you have a, a, a Jewish rabbi, you have a, a few other a few other re religious a figures. Cornucopia of everything. A cornucopia so of, a general, of like, life, <laughs> which I found which I found fascinating because in our culture, death is so, it's like I was thinking. Part of me was thinking, well, I mean, they've been dead for three years. Hmm. They don't know the difference at all, and no one here knows who they were. So why are we doing this? Why am I even here right now? And I realized it was, it wasn't so much for them, as it was for the stable, the like, just our society. 
and it represents how stable and and safe and secure our society is because if we don't show the respects of, of, of our dead then who are we if Los Angeles was just like well we got these unclaimed dead just burn them going twice yeah go <laughs> yeah. all right <laughs> nope must have never existed right it's kind of it's just a, a representation of saying hey life life is pretty important so death mm. Has got to be too, right? You're bringing a real tender moment to this show. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, it, it, when I first heard about this uh, part of our, our city a while ago, I, I had a lot of respect for taking that. I don't know if every city does something like that, but that's, you know, it is. It is it makes you think, like, wow, I, I belong to a society that has their shit together. Yeah. Like, I know that if I die and no yeah, one claims me, yeah. at least I will, my, you know, someone I'm not going to pray be, for me. Yeah. Someone will pray for me. You know, someone will respect the fact that I even lived in the first place, mm -hmm. and I think it's an ultimate. Like, you don't see that in the animal kingdom. It, you see a lot of things that are, you know, you see mourning, but you don't mm -hmm. see um, you don't see a ceremony. Like you don't compassion. see tradition. And in Game of Thrones, it seems like most everyone who who dies gets some kind of send off, whether that's they are embalmed and shipped off, like 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 Mr. Tully. You know, shipped off in a, in a boat and, and well, cremated. Well, he that was cre way. yeah, cremated. And he was cremated. He kind of had a combination of both. He got embalmed, and yeah. he had the coin or the stones on his eyes, and he got cremated. He got the, and, the and he got that. sent into the water, <laughs> kind of like they do with the drowned god. Mm -hmm. that he did um, with uh, just like spacing everyone's name right now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the the king, um, king, king Greyjoy. Balon. You're on. Balon. Balon. God for Jeremy. Thank God for you right now. <laughs> but Balon Greyjoy, they just basically shoved him in the water. They're like, all right, what does dead men never well, die? Mm -hmm. And then... It is kind of amazing, die. though. So we, you know, and of course we saw the Dothraki funeral mm -hmm. uh, um, for Drogo. But think about everyone that's died on the show. We've actually only seen five or six legit funerals. Mm -hmm. We, we we could have seen them across every culture. We have uh, Lannister dying. We have Martell mm -hmm. dying. We have um, uh, people from all over. We have Liza Aaron dying. Yeah, we, we oh, could yeah. have seen those in every in in each of the uh, kingdoms and and gotten to know their traditions. Mm -hmm. I mean, but then again, they, they're trying to shorten it. It would have to be like 12 right. seasons if you wanted to have every funeral. Yeah, every right, <laughs> every funeral. Could you imagine? Might be the extra season somewhere. Funeral. <laughs> I would have loved to see the Oberyn Martell funeral, though. That oh, you that couldn't have an open yeah. casket for, for no. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just put a, like, but, a melon there instead, yeah. like in place. But, <laughs> Draw a little happy face on it. Yeah. Cut it out. <laughs> A can <laughs> is that a cantaloupe? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're right. I bet, I bet you Dorn... Is a little bit more Dothraki -like. happy, like mm -hmm. yeah, Dothraki like exactly. Yeah. Whereas you know, King's Landing is more cold and sulking and like uh, I don't know, pure out. pure reverence. Mm -hmm. um, but and well, then well, some people which, don't even get the honor of a. Well, go ahead. Yeah. Well, well, the, the reverence um, le leads me to something I was thinking about. You know, we we inherit this story when the faith isn't as powerful as it became a couple of seasons later with the High Sparrow, and you wonder like. If they had celebrations, were they all going to become like we're weddings, not going to be feasts anymore? Right. Um, uh, just uh, we, we, you know, eventually that all went away in a big fireball. But yeah. that could have really changed the way everything we know about festivals and really, funerals and everything happens because it was almost like a reformation that was yeah, going on. Yeah, they're almost going to kind of degenerate back into even more. Of a, even though it seems like they're kind of in a dark ages right now, it would have been even worse because before. Before the, um, the the faith militant were, you know, eradicated, things were things were a lot worse, and they were going back towards that direction. Um, I guess it just it's better to not be gluttonous, and you know, feasts are gluttony. You know, the guy the guy didn't even wear shoes. You know, he's <laughs> like, uh, anyone, you know, I don't need them if someone else can use them. So yeah, definitely feasts, any kind of any kind of uh, ostentatious celebration would never have been allowed. But uh, I guess we got you know. Cersei, do you think? For, you know. Oh, yeah, blowing it up. Yeah, we can. She brought we, back you know, the fun. Yeah, we can yeah. party. Yeah. She like, puts the fun <laughs> in funeral. Like, Who's ready for another feast? <laughs> there's, a, there is a, there's a widespread respect the for the death, though. Uh, remember, when, remember when Daenerys <laughs> nailed, crucified her, her masters up on the walls, mm -hmm. like over 160 of them, and she just let, left them there to rot. And what's his name? Uh, Hisdar Zolorak. 
basically came and said, hey, listen, please, can I just bury my, my father? Can I just give him a proper funeral? Can I just put his bones in the, in the temple with my ancestors? It's important for people to honor their dead. Even Daenerys couldn't argue against that. Um, and then, you know, you have people like, like Walder Frey, who threw Miss Stark's body into the, into the, into the, the great, the, the Green Fork. Mm-hmm. Like just the, to let her, just the, in the swamp, just yeah. to let her rot. <laughs> Joffrey let, let Ed, Ned Stark's head sit on a spike for weeks before they finally parlayed for, for his bones to be returned. So now Ned Stark can be back in his in Rob his, Stark was defiled and a wolf's head um, put on top of his body. Yeah. And and across all cultures and religions in the Game of Thrones world, any kind of deformation of the dead is seen as just in bad taste. It's taboo. Yeah, it is. No matter who you are, where you know, even like even um uh the Boltons. I mean they they flay and torture their um their hosts but they always kind of find a way to bury them or burn them or something. So, um, I don't know, let me ask you guys, what do you want to happen, what do, you, what do you want to have happen to you, or what kind of celebration, or, I'll start so it's not so weird, but when after I die, <laughs> I think it'd be cool, because of my Egyptian heritage, sure, I'd, like to have, I'd like to have some kind of pyramid, instead of like a tombstone, I don't want a pyramid, I think that'd be cool. A would, huge one? Fitting. A, I want a huge pyramid, <laughs> and all my co-hosts to be buried with me. <laughs> Wait, have everyone we haven't even got to what I want. Have yet, everyone either. wonder how you built it? <laughs> how do you do it? What? Aliens for sure. Yeah. Are we your servants? I'll just, I'll, yeah. I'll just uh, <laughs> I said co hosts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just write on the tombstone and Google it. <laughs> yeah, Google. Period. <laughs> what about you? Fair enough. Um, how do you top that one? Uh, um, you can get I'm, your remains blasted into space. I, I, actually, I was gonna, gonna say if I'm gonna, I could go to the moon. My last wish: send me up there, just pow. Yeah, just blast me. Zoom. Like, uh, get me out of the atmosphere and just send me in a straight shot. And do you want people to party, or do you want them to like? Yeah, party. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want people to party. I want them to sit there and think about what they've done. You know who you are. What they've done? What are you insinuating? You you know who you are. He's like he's on to us. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like oh they missed their chance at those four weddings you were at, huh? Yeah. They're like, <laughs> they weren't this mine. Is the wedding. I feel like uh, <laughs> this is the one. I feel like uh, I, I, it would be kind of cool. Um, that if like I died and my body was still intact, because if I were to die. I would not want my body to be intact. I would like to explode. But okay, uh, but All if, right. if I do end up dying and my body is still physic- physically what? intact, well, that's like the that's the dream. I would like um, to explode. I would like someone to put me in like a suit or uh, <laughs> a superhero suit or something, and, and, and uh, with a cape at least. <laughs> put me on a catapult and just fling me some like just into the ocean or into the canyon. <laughs> Just something that just just sends me flying. I gotta write this down. (laughs) So okay, if you kill me, I have to explode. But yeah, yeah, I would love to just get flung. (laughs) Brilliant, Jeremy. Any last words? Well, I, I, I mean, I just need to keep the ridiculous meter going. So I'm gonna say, um, I think I want to do it Frey Pie style. Say, uh, (laughs) don't worry about it. I already arranged the catering (laughs) and have all all the friends. He's got the. You're working on the recipe. Do people know that they're eating you? No, then you have a little 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 video message that comes up. (laughs) Like, Like hey guys, Jeremy. Oh hey, look at that. Someone looks down in their pie and it's like you enjoying the pie. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm gonna let you. Happy Hanukkah. Keep eating. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Like Who's got my one? fingers? The direction we have <laughs> taken this. Yeah, man. Uh, well, I mean, it seems like yeah, funerals are kind of the party to look forward to if you're if you're in the Game of Thrones <laughs> world because everything else kind of ends badly. Um, if you have a funeral, you only have one funeral that comes out of it. You have a wedding, you might have 40, 50 funerals yeah. that come out of it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the same at this point almost, like a wedding funeral <laughs> slash. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's a, we're getting married today. Yeah, you get a, uh, you, if you get a wedding scroll yeah, they from have, a raven, just kind of block out the next few months afterwards because mm-hmm. you're going to be hitting funerals left and right after it's that. It's the Hugh Grant romantic yeah. comedy. Four weddings <laughs> and a funeral, right? <laughs> a wedding and four funerals. Is that what <laughs> Pretty much. Well, um... Guys, it was, it was a lot of fun. We have to wrap, but that was, uh, it, it's fun. To, it's always fun sitting down with you guys and exploring the world of Game of Thrones as they don't really show us or write it, write it down in the books that we just kind of can speculate and 
They might have gotten some ideas of, of things to mm-hmm. incorporate in the show from our conjecturing and our funeral we'll discussion. Link without, without a doubt. And <laughs> D.B. Weiss, you know, <laughs> David Benioff, thank you guys for making the show. And we, anything we can do anytime to help. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys, why don't you uh, go around and tell us where we can follow you and keep up with you over the, over the holidays and until we come back next year. So I'm on Instagram at Ross Like a Boss and uh, Mr. Shear over here. I am, uh, I'm Lauren Shear, S-C-H. E R E R. Uh, it's private right now, but you can go ahead and. Hit. Ooh la la! Can, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty. pretty You're one of those guys. <laughs> one of those guys. Follow me at uh, uh, my private page. You can try and follow me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Oh God, he'll he'll approve you. Just <laughs> give it a try. I, I will. <laughs> and I'm totally cut off to the outside world. I don't want to hear from anyone. Um, no emails. I, so, I'm in the fortress, no of, fortress of social media solitude. Mm-hmm. So go take in- innovation and entrepreneurship at USC, and you can catch up with Dan. Good Guys, and I'm and I'm Ryan, Professor I'm, Danny. I'm, I'm Ryan, Raven. Professor Professor Danny. Uh, I'm Ryan Mallet. You guys can follow me at Ryan Mallet everywhere. And to everyone out there from from all of us here at AfterBuzz TV, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, and uh, we'll see you next year. Amen. I had to throw in an amen. <laughs> <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Uh, amen. 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 <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.